Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson, and this video is going to be Introduction to Matrix Operations in Mathematica. So we'll start off by first defining a matrix in Mathematica. I'm going to let A equal my first matrix, and the easiest way to enter in a matrix in Mathematica is to put a parentheses and use control comma to distinguish different columns and control enter to distinguish different rows. So I'll put in my specific values of 1, 0, 2, 1, close my parentheses, and I'll use a semicolon to suppress the output, and now I define my matrix A. So that's the easy way for me to define a matrix. Now, once I've defined it, I can actually pull out individual components from that matrix. For instance, if I want to look at the second row, first column, that, uh, that component in the 2-1 position, that should be the value of 2, whereas the component in the 1-1 position should be 1. So now I can see how I can pull out different values from my matrix. All right, so I've defined A. Let's define another matrix, B. And this matrix is going to be matrix 1, 0, 0, 0. So now I've stored that value. And one thing I want to be able to do is do matrix operations. I want to be able to add, subtract, multiply matrices. So let's see how we can do that in Mathematica. I can just take A plus B and get my output. Now, once again, if I want that pretty matrix form, I can use the command matrix form. And now I can see that result that that really is A plus B. And of course, it's easy enough to go A plus 2B. I can also add scalar values as well. Now, what about matrix multiplication? Well, if I multiply these two matrices, because B is kind of a special matrix here, this is really just going to pull out the first column of A. So let's see what happens when I run this. Sure enough, there's the first column of A. So I can do this matrix multiplication as well. Now, what if we change our values a little bit? Let me go back into this matrix and add another column. So now I'll add another column of zeros. So the first thing I'll try to do is add these matrices together. Now when I go ahead and add them, Mathematica is smart enough to say those are not the right dimensions to be added. And so it'll kick out an error. Now if I go to multiply it, it might be fine in that uh, direction. But if I go the other way, B times A, once again, it's going to warn me that you don't have the right dimensions to do this operation that you're requesting. Now what other operations can we investigate? What about the transpose? Well, we do have a command called the transpose of my matrix A. And so here you can see that I have taken the transpose of A. I've taken the value in the 2-1 position and moved it to the 1-2 position. Now, there's actually a shortcut command for that as well. If I have my matrix A, I can hit escape, TR escape, and that'll give me that kind of raised T symbol. And once again, that is just the transpose. So now that I know how to calculate the transpose, I might want to test some matrix properties with my transpose. For instance, I might be interested in seeing if A times B, if that quantity transpose is really equal to B transpose times A transpose. So this is one of my transpose properties. And so I kind of want to see if it's true. Now, I can definitely run this in a small case and see, sure, I get the same matrix. Um, but not only is that not a proof, uh, but it's also not very comforting because I'm really just choosing some small values and it's very easy to, to fall into special cases. So in general, if I want to do some, some testing maybe to see what properties hold and don't hold, once again, this is testing, not proof. I like to be able to generate some larger matrices without having to type in all my different my entries. So what are some shortcuts to making special matrices? Let's look at a couple. First, let's start with some special matrices. For instance, I often want to talk about the identity matrix. So in Mathematica, we have a command called identity matrix. And the only argument of the command is what size you want this matrix to be. So for instance, if I want an 8 by 8 identity matrix, and once again, just to make it a little easier to see, I'm going to put it in matrix form. Sure enough, there's my 8 by 8 identity matrix, and I haven't had to type in all those ones and zeros. Now, what if I don't want it to be the identity matrix? Instead, I want to make it a diagonal matrix. Well, we have a command for that, too. This is diagonal matrix, diagonal matrix. But now the argument is a list of the values on the diagonal. 
So if I wanted to put in a list, one, two, three, for instance, it would give me a three by three diagonal matrix with diagonal entries, one, two, and three. So what kind of special matrices can I create here? What if I want the zero matrix? Well, what I can do there is use the constant array command. Constant array says, here's my value that I want to be all throughout my matrix. And then next I put in the dimensions of my matrix. So if I wanted a three by two matrix of all zeros, that's how I would do it. Or if I wanted a three by three matrix of all ones, I could just change that constant value as well. So let's now con construct several special matrices, but I don't really want to use a special matrix when I want to kind of test out properties to see if they're working. So one way I can generate some random matrices is to use the command random, and I can choose whether I want to do integer or real. Random integer, for instance, will say choose a random integer between some values. How about the values 0 and 3? And then I need the dimensions of the array where I'm going to store these random integers. So maybe once again, I want a three by two matrix. When I evaluate that, it's going to give me a three by two matrix where all the entries of my matrix are randomly generated integers between the range of zero to three. What if I wanted it between the range of zero and 300? No problem. What if I wanted it to be 30 by 20? Once again, no problem, but that's something I might not want to see. In fact, it, better, it might be better for me to store that value instead to some some name and then not visually see it. So what I would do here is I'd have to be careful to get rid of that matrix form command. That matrix form command takes that um, standard matrix that we would normally enter as a list of lists, a list of rows, and it makes it into a pretty display form. But I can't use that display form to calculate. So if I want to generate this random matrix, if I just ran it now, I would get that list of lists. But instead I might want to store this maybe to A and then suppress the output. And now I can work with the matrix A without having to, to, to see the giant thing here. Now instead of using random integers, I could also use random real numbers. So maybe this time we actually want to see this one. So once again, I will go to matrix form. And now we'll make this a little bit smaller so it's a little bit easier for us to see. And what do I have? I have a three by two matrix, but now instead of random integers, I'm pulling random real matrices. And so what are the nice things about this? Well, maybe once again, I want to test this feature. I want to see if this A dot B transpose is really equal to B transpose times A transpose. Well, instead of trying to just enter a little two by two matrix, it might be better if instead I took a random real matrix that pulled values maybe from 0 to 100, and it was a 20 by 20 matrix. And if I just did that same thing to create a matrix A and also a matrix B, I would have two very random matrices. And then I could run this cell to see if they're the same, but it would be very hard for me to tell if these things are the same. So it might be better if I were to subtract those values. And if I were to subtract those two matrices, then what would I expect as an output? I would expect to get the zero matrix. So now I can see that property, it, I'm pretty happy that it's holding because I have generated two 20 by 20 matrices filled with random values from zero to 100 and that property still held. So once again, this isn't a proof of any properties. It's just a little way we can test things pretty easily in Mathematica by generating random matrices. So to summarize, we've seen how to add, subtract matrices, how to multiply them by scalars. We know how to take the transpose and generate many special matrices. And so now you can really investigate matrices on your own. And that concludes this video. Thank you very much.